Well, what a pleasant surprise. A fall in the official jobless rate today shocked economists and the government. The unemployment rate dropped to 6.8%. That's 0.7% down from the numbers in July. And no one predicted this. So what happened? Well, jobs growth was significantly stronger than expected, but most of the jobs created were only part-time. In another positive sign, total hours worked increased by 1.6 million hours. But underemployment remains steady, so people are still not getting as much work as they'd like. And there's still a huge number of people out of work, but not actually looking, so they don't count as unemployed. In a moment, we'll take a detailed look at how JobKeeper and Seeker are skewing the figures. But first, Rachel Papazzoni with what these numbers really mean. Melbourne couple Kirby and Kyle Neal are among the growing number of Victorians out of work. Our household income has been taken down to a third of a what, third, we usually, yeah. what we'd usually earn. Melbourne's lockdown forced Kirby to shut her hair salon and husband Kyle has been on JobSeeker since his work dried up in March. You've still got phone bills to pay, you've still got water, electricity, gas. You know, it's, it's, uh, you can only go so far before it keeps on banking up on you. Across Victoria, more than 42,000 people lost their job last month, but outside the lockdown state, it's a different story, with the number of Australians in a job on the rise. It was a blockbuster jobs report in all, in all ways of looking at it. Sydney car sales photographer Ryan McDonald's benefited from the uptick. After seeing all his hours wiped out in March, he's now back in a full-time job. Pretty relieving, like it gives you just that sense of confidence again and to get back to like a normal routine. The number of hours worked rose a fraction, overall up 0.1 of a percent. The 1.8% rise in hours worked in all states except Victoria was offset by the 4.8% plunge in the locked down state. A clear divide is emerging between Victoria and the rest of the country. What I worry most about is that a lot of the falls in hours worked in Victoria that we saw in August might actually translate into job, permanent job losses later down the track. While there are now fewer than one million Australians out of a job, they're not just in Victoria. Former Brisbane medical receptionist Amber Pereira has been struggling to find work since March. A lot of people are applying for things at the moment. Um, my mum as well was applying for a new job, so it's um, really hard. A lot of people don't have jobs at the moment. She's been topping up her job seeker payments by selling illustrations to friends and family. It's not a bad idea, considering the government is slashing the job seeker benefit by $300 at the end of next week, and JobKeeper will also be cut back to $1,200 a fortnight at the end of this month. And not all businesses are expected to survive those cuts. Some will have to reduce capacity as well, and that will then lead to a, a deterioration in, in employment as well towards the end of the year. While today's jobs numbers were a surprise to pretty much everybody, it's probably not time to start popping the corks just yet. When government support measures for workers begin to be wound up, the true impact of job losses will start to be felt. Many economists expect the unemployment rate will rise to end the year somewhere between 8.5 and 9 per cent. You miss going to the salon and being a salon dog? The Neals hope Melbourne's restrictions are lifted sooner than anticipated so they can get back to work. Let's get everybody back out, stimulate the economy and get our communities back together.